good. Good? We're, we're good. safe. Come on, how are you doing today? Great! Alright, alright, that's good, man. What a subject to preach on. I mean, you can't get any better than the love of God. Amen. Can you? No. The love of God is so great. You know, we talk about the love of God a lot up in the youth room. And the question I always get, and, and you know if you You've ever been young before, which I know some of you might not <laughs> been a while for some of you. But yeah. If you've ever been young, you know that there's a lot of questions you have, right? Mm. Amen. Mm. There's always a lot of questions. There's a lot of uh, just things that come up in your heart that go, really? How, how can God love me? How can God love me if things are happening in my life that are bad? You know, friends, family, people die, things happen. And it's an important thing to understand the love of God. You have to understand how fallen we are. See, love is a choice, right? Anybody who's married says amen. amen. Sometimes you've got to choose to love. Sometimes it's easy to love, right? Mm -hmm. But either way, love is a choice. If we didn't have a choice, which is the answer to that question, why would a loving God allow evil in the world? He didn't allow it. We chose it. Mm -hmm. We chose evil. We're born into evil. We don't know anything but evil and sin. The Bible says we drink down iniquity as if it were water. Wow. We're conceived in sin. See, to understand the love of God, you have to understand that it's just like the stars. Just like a black sky exalts the stars so you can see them, so does understanding the blackness of our own hearts exalt the love that God mm. has given to us. Mm. So... Today, this morning, did somebody take all of those stars and put them in a basket and run away with them? Mm. No. You just can't see them because it's light outside, right? That's right. Now, if, if I were to stand here and tell you, oh, people are great, we're doing awesome. And, uh, you know, God is good, but we're doing great things here. I mean, we're, we're awesome and we're, it's kind of hard to see the true love of, of God. We have to understand that we are sinful. And it's only because of His love. See, that's what causes us to fall on our knees and worship Him. Amen. Because of His love for Amen. us. Because of how unworthy we were. Mm -hmm. Notice that word, we were. Without Him. Now, we talk about the love of God in church quite often. But you see, it's not just a love like a love between a man and a wife. It's not the love of a... It is a love that passes all understanding, guys. It's a love that we truly will not ever understand until we get to heaven because it's unfathomable. I can't even barely say that word. Okay? But you can't fathom it. That's what I'm getting at. Okay, so I'm going to read you some scriptures today. Yeah, I'm one of those youth pastors. I got the cell phone out now. It's easy, okay? <laughs> Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned. All. Not some. Not those who are, you know, in church. They're okay, but everybody else has sinned. Mm -hmm. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Do we really understand the weight of that? I believe that all, all of salvation can be summed up in that one scripture. All have sinned. That means that God, the creator of all things, the one who literally formed the earth, he told the planets, go, get in the perfect rotation and orbit. And they said, amen. He said to the stars, go find your place in the sky. And they bowed down in obedience. He said to the oceans, you will stop right here. And, go further. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
And the ocean bowed down and said, Amen. And he says to us, Come, follow me and I'll, I'll love you. And we say, No! And we sin. That is sin. Do we realize how much weight comes with that? See, if we don't realize our own sin, we can't truly realize how much God loves us. Does that make sense? Yep. Everybody following me? Mm -hmm. You with me? Yes. yes. It is the depravity of our own hearts that truly shows us who God is. That's what births every good thing in us. Is when God, we, we can truly see how lost and sinful we are. But we can see how much God loves us. Okay. His love goes beyond all things. And for, uh, for this purpose, he sent his son. Amen? Amen. Amen? He sent his son, Jesus. And this is Romans 8.32. He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. Just, just take that in for a second. He who did not spare his own son, now, how many fathers do we have in here today? Raise your hands. Now, you will understand the true weight of that as fathers. He who did not spare his own son, his own flesh and blood. If you were to take your own son and give him up to beating, give him up to being spit at, Give him up to being literally butchered and killed, stabbed with a spear, mm. whipped with whips. This is what the rest of the scripture says. He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? So here's what Paul is saying. If God could get over giving his own son up to all of that horror, don't you think, wouldn't it stand to reason that he would not hold anything from us? Mm -hmm. We were the reason. We are the reason that God gave Jesus. Every single one of us were the reason. And if he is for us, and he is never against us, mm. Mm. I'm here to tell you today, any kind of sickness that you may go through, any kind of, of, of hardship you may go through, it's not God. It's not God. It's not his wrath. It's not his retribution. Mm. The enemy came to steal, kill, and destroy. Mm. That's it. Mm. See, we, we have in our minds because we were so unworthy that we must deserve punishment, right? Mm. Then if, if that's what you're saying, then Jesus' work is, is not. Mm. It's, it's not worth anything. See, to understand the full and true love of God, you have to understand that He took it all. Amen. That's what the Bible he took everything. He didn't take some of it and then you got to do the best you can hmm. or else you're going to be punished. He took it all. He took everything you used to do. He took everything you're going to do. He took it all. Amen. Amen. He is always for us. Never against us. Amen. Constantly can we even begin to fathom the love that God has for us. Mm. That He would give His only Son for me. Not just for me, but for every person. And yes, every evil person. Every person that doesn't know the Lord. See, this is the love that we 
as Christians have to understand. We have to understand that we were bought by grace, but then we have to communicate it to others. Mm. Because we have brothers and sisters out there. We're called to love as God loves. We're forgiven, so forgive. Mm. Amen? Amen. So if we are forgiven and we are to forgive, then we have to go out and we have to love the people around us. And it's hard sometimes. <laughs> sometimes I want to slack them. I really do. But we're called to love them and to show the love of Christ and to show the love of God. That is our greatest calling. To go and spread the love of God that Jesus brought and made accessible to us. Amen? Amen, 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 amen. amen. <laughs> but when the set time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law that we might receive adoption to sonship because you are his son. God, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, the spirit who calls out Abba Father. Mm -hmm. So you are no longer a slave, but God's child. Mm -hmm. And since you are his child, God has made you also. Can you comprehend that? Think of a king. Think of your favorite TV show. I don't know if we need to pray for you and you watch those TV shows nowadays that are real popular because I'm going to pray for you if you do. <laughs> but there's a lot of TV shows out right now that have big kings and stuff like that. Imagine the greatest king of all. The king over all kings. The one who fashioned your nervous system. Mm. The one who continues to make your heart beat. Mm. That king. The king of unfathomable power and grace and goodness and love. Imagine that king. He not only saved you. Okay? He saved you and he brought you into relationship with him. That's the equivalent of that king. Not just saying, okay, I'm going to take these peasants that have been horrible to me. And I'm going to allow them to live. And, and you know, they're going to do okay. They're going to have food. He didn't just do that. He didn't just do this either. He didn't just say, okay, I'm going to bring you in. And I'm, I'm going to make you, you know, one of my knights or one of my warriors or something like that. He didn't just do that. He didn't even bring you in and say, I'm going to make you one of my highest, highest ranked people. He didn't, he didn't do that. He made you an heir. Mm -hmm. Do you understand what that word means? An heir. We are in sonship and daughtership to the Most High. Mm -hmm. Amen. We are sons and daughters of God. Oh, wow. The Most Mighty King. The, the person who causes us to think and to breathe and to have being. We are, are His sons and daughters. We're heirs. Heirs. You, I mean, if that doesn't get you excited, we need to get you some Mountain Dew or something. Come on, come on now. We, that, we are heirs of God. That is amazing. That type of love, I can't even comprehend because I know that it's not me that's worthy. It's, I, I, I don't deserve that. But because of what Jesus did, he stands there and says, I'll take it, son. I'll take all of the things you do wrong. I'll take it. You have the innership. You, you have the sonship. Come on. There is no greater love. People nowadays, they say, well, Christians, you know, they don't really love people. You know, if you're... If you're gay, if you're this, if you're that, then, then they don't love you. That's absolutely false. Mm -hmm. Absolutely false. This is a lot of the questions we get up in youth group, too. What does God say about homosexuality? For one, it's wrong. Mm -hmm. Okay? For one, it's, it's absolutely not biblical. It's mm -hmm. wrong. 
It's sin. But it's no more sin than it is to lie. It's no more sin than it is to struggle with alcoholism. It's no more sin than any other sin. I don't hate the alcoholic. I hate that he's dealing with the sin. When my son is about to walk up to the stove, right, right after we've been cooking on it, we have an electric stove, right? And he goes to touch it. I, I scream at him, I say, hey, don't touch it, right? Because that's, that's what a good father would do. That's what my dad would do to me. I might, I might get a little bit of a swat, too. <laughs> but you say, hey, don't touch that. Did, did I say that to my son because I don't want him to have a good time? Mm. <laughs> did I say that to my sons because I didn't want them to have fun and, and party? And... No, I said that to him because I don't want him to get hurt. Amen. Amen. Just in the same way, God has given us these things to stay away from because he knows that they will burn us. <laughs> he knows that all bad things will come mm -hmm. from doing these things. So God is not a Debbie Downer. He's not a prude, okay? God says to us these things out of love, the same love that a father has. Just like I just told you, we are heirs. We're sons and daughters, right? He is our father. Amen. Are you listening to Daddy? Thank you, Lord. Thank you. That's the only question. Well, well, Pastor Ann, why, why would God allow bad things, and, and why would he make it wrong to be homosexual or things like that? He didn't make it wrong. We chose it, and it was wrong. Mm -hmm. He set things forth in the beginning of time, and it set them perfectly, and Adam and Eve walked with God mm -hmm. in relationship with him, hand in hand. Things were beautiful. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine? Things were amazing mm -hmm. until they chose they chose. Amen. God did not choose to allow evil. They chose it. Well, why would he allow them to choose it, Pastor Aaron? That doesn't make any sense. Can you have love without choice? You cannot. See, if we didn't have a choice, we would be robots. Now, if my wife was just married to me because she's forced to be, and she's forced to be happy, and she's that's not a relationship, right? Mm. She's got to be. She's got to choose to be with my stinky butt. <laughs> okay, she's got to choose sometimes, and sometimes it's a hard choice, right? <laughs> All the women in here said, "Amen, <laughs> amen." Okay, just like she has to choose, and by that choice, I do feel the love that she has for me. We have to choose. Are we going to be obedient to our Father? Are we going to be in a relationship with our Father? See, if we didn't have a choice, God would have just created some robots. Come on, let's be honest. He's God. If he just wanted to, to feel exalted and, and, and everything, he would have just created some, made some angels to worship him. That's all he would have needed to do. He made us in his image. <coughs> And gave us that freedom of choice so that we can have love. So that he can have love. Oh, we haven't even gotten there yet. We haven't even gotten there yet. We're, we're still talking about how we can experience that love. But we're going to get to something else in a minute. <laughs> um, Jeremiah 33, 9. Call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says about the house in this city and the royal places of Judah that have been torn down to be used against the siege ramps and the swords and the fight in the Babylonian, with the Babylonians. They will be filled with the dead bodies of the people. I will slay in it my anger and wrath. I will hide my face from this city because of all its wickedness. Nevertheless, I will bring health and healing to it. 
Wait a second. So even in all of our wickedness, even in all of our wickedness, God says, I'm still going to bring health and healing. Amen. There you go. Even in some of the most wicked times, God still says, well, Pastor Aaron, but, but God also said that he's going to... Whenever God does something, it's for love. These are the questions I get as well. Pastor Aaron, in the Old Testament, there was, there was killing, there was wars, there was this, and it was all for love. Think about that for a second. That's, that's some of the biggest hang-ups, and that's one of the things I want to address. See, when God said to David, go out and slay this nation, it was so the Jewish nation could be established, Jesus could come, and we could be free. Without that, we'd still be going to hell in a handbasket, guys. Period. So, let me answer any questions that any of you in here might have. Oh, well, you know, but there's not. No. Every time God does something, it's for love. Everything has leaded to love. Lead, leaded. I went to New Haven. I could, I could, I could hear some of the thoughts in here. Like that. Judge not. Oh man. So when we talk about love, we often talk about God's love for us, right? His amazing love for sinners. Mm. And it's, un you, you can't even begin. Like I just <laughs> described to you, a king, greater than any king, greater than any, any thinking can comprehend. But do we love him? This is the question. If we understand how fallen we are, just like the darkness of the sky, of the night sky, how it exalts those stars. If we understand how fallen we are without Him, if we understand how far from Him we truly would be, that's what causes men to fall on their face and cry out the Father. Mm -hmm. That's what causes us. That's why we worship. Why it doesn't come up here and sing songs so that we can have pretty music. Mm -hmm. We don't come up here, we don't sing, and we don't preach so that we can have nice, pretty things, and, and we can, you know, we're not motivational speakers here. Right. This Amen. is about the love of Christ. This is about how fallen this nation, this world, how fallen we are, but how we have the cure. Anybody watch those zombie shows? You don't have to raise your hand because I, you know, I don't want anybody to have to come up and pray over you. Um, but if you ever watch those zombie shows, um, yeah, if you ever watch those, those zombie shows and stuff, it's all about, you know, they're trying to find the cure, blah, blah. The whole world's been taken over by this, and, and now they're trying to find a cure. <coughs> it's real. Because if you're walking around and you don't know Christ, you are a zombie. Amen. There you, go. you are half in the grave. You are undead. Okay? We have the cure mm. for the entire planet. World War Z, guys, if you've seen it, I know some of you young ones in here are like, whoa, <laughs> we have the cure. Yeah, that's right. We have the cure. We have the thing that can set everyone free. We have the love in our hearts to give that will break the chains mm. and the foundations of sin and death and hatred. There you go. Everywhere. This nation has been more divided now than a very long time. We have the cure. It's not picking a side. 
It's not saying, oh, I'm going to argue and fight with you. It's saying, do you know how much Jesus loves you? Mm. Do you understand how fallen all of us are? It doesn't matter who you are. Black, white, yellow, green, I don't care. It doesn't matter. Do you know that the love of Christ sets you free? Mm. That is the cure. Mm. That and only that. <clears throat> No amount of inclusiveness, no amount of, oh, I'm going to say that this is okay. Listen, no. We love everyone as Christians. Every single living soul we love. We love dearly. We pray for those who are in sin. That they would see the folly of their way and turn to Christ. And avoid literal damnation in hell. Mm. That is the love that we are to have. And when you understand the blackness of your own heart and how much grace it took to save you, you can truly go out and sympathize and empathize with these sinners Amen. and say to them, mm -hmm. brother, sister, I've got some great news for you. Mm -hmm. I know you're dealing with alcoholism. I know you're dealing with same-sex attraction. I know you're dealing with all of these other things. But there's a cure. Amen. There is a way to get better. And it's through the love that God showed through the ages, from the beginning of time, that he brought all of us out of that darkness and gave us a light. We just have to accept it. We have to suck up our own pride. Mm -hmm. And it's hard sometimes. Mm -hmm. But be sure that no matter where you are, no matter how gruff someone is with you, no matter how, um, how do I put this? No matter how worldly someone is with you, no matter what type of language they may throw at you, love the sinner. See, Jesus didn't come and go to the temple. Mm -hmm. He went to the docks, y'all. Mm -hmm. yeah. He went to the docks with the sailors. Now, I don't know where the term cussing like a sailor came from, <laughs> but probably from the docks. Joni, you're right. <laughs> he didn't go to the temple. He went to the docks. He picked up Peter. Do, do, do you hear me? Jesus was a gangster. He didn't hang out with all of the religious elite. Mm -hmm. He didn't eat in haughty places. He hung out with tax collectors, sinners. He was around prostitutes. Mm -hmm. He didn't do as they did. Now listen and understand me. If you have had an issue with alcoholism, I am not telling you to go to a bar. <laughs> Do not do that. If you've had a problem with any other type of issue and, and you're still going through it, I'm not telling you to throw yourself back into that issue. But I am saying, don't, don't look at people in judgment of what they're going through. Look at people and realize that you had to go through that. <clears throat> look at people and understand that they're in their walk and they need someone to encourage you. They need someone to encourage them and that needs to be you. Just like it was Bob and Barb Allen for me or my mom and dad for me or a lot of different people. Of course, Pastor Joni for me. Leonard and Laura for me. Encouragers in my life as I was coming up. We need more encouragers of the love of Christ Amen. so that people will know that they are loved. Amen. So that people will know that they're cared for. Amen? Amen. We need fathers to be fathers like Pastor I preached on a little while back that are more than just fathers to their own children. We need mothers to be mothers to kids that are more than just their own kids. See, it takes a community. We are the body of Christ. 
We're not just an individual in Christ. So go and spread the good news. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now Jesus was the example of this. Jacob's well was there and Jesus, tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well. It was about noon when a Samaritan woman came to draw water. Jesus said to her, will you give me a drink? Boss, can you just imagine the God of all creation sitting next to you, the Son of mm. God, mm. saying, will you give me a drink? Pretty amazing. His disciple had gone into the town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, you are a Jew, and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews did not associate with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God, who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him if he would give you a drink of living water. Just because you might be in a different place, just because you might have already gone through a lot of things and come out of it, does not mean that you stop showing the love of Christ to people. See, the Samaritans and the Jews did not associate. It was pretty much tradition, right, Pastor? They did not associate. They, they, in fact, I believe there's some scriptural reference to say that they, they called them dogs. They didn't like each other, okay? <laughs> Let's just put it like that. But who is the connecting factor? Jesus. The living one. So where you are at, if it's somebody who is different than what you've grown up with, if it's somebody that, that's dealing, and, and there's a lot of crazy <laughs> things going on today, guys, okay? We've got, what is it now, like 47 different genders that people are saying <laughs> exist? There is some crazy stuff going on today. There, and that's why I feel like I needed to say this. There, there's, something, there's some crazy, crazy stuff going on. There's something like 90-some different sexual orientations. Crazy. Doesn't make any sense. Just absolutely off-putting. Especially to someone that has morality as their compass. You're like, hey, whoa, keep, keep that... Okay, but the Lord loves them too. And the only way that that gets better is through men and women of God 